quiet. Sure. <laughs> and when I do say something, it's that really deep stuff, right? <laughs> uh, I've been asked to say a few words today, so bear with me. Have we all heard of the word passion? I'm not talking about the passion that Mrs. Brookings knows about when she reads those romance novels. <laughs> I'm talking about that passion to do things that, that's in your heart that I want to succeed, that I want to accomplish, I want to bring, I want to, I want to achieve certain goals. That kind of passion is what makes legends and heroes. Passion is what makes a little kid in a Christmas play sing louder than everybody else, whether they're on key or not. Passion is what makes a vertically challenged white kid play point guard for one of the best coaches ever coached basketball. Passion is what pushes a little boy into coaching. Passion is what makes a guy want to be a school board member. Passion is what makes him, that same guy want to be a school board superintendent. Passion is what makes that same guy call his lifelong friend up on Saturday and say, hey, you want to do that presentation about Paige at the uh, gala? And it makes that friend lie to him and go, no, I don't really want to talk about Paige at the gala. <laughs> anyway, for 12 years, I've sat on this board with a gentleman named Chris Cowper. 12 years, we have butted heads, we've agreed, we've hugged it out, we've busted out, we've had a heck of a time. Never once was that friendship questioned. Never once was that passion doubted. That passion made us all better. That passion pulled us forward. We may disagree on what he did, we may disagree on issues, you can never doubt passion and the desire to make it better. The man is legendary to me. When I was about nine years old, I met a little boy who was about four. And he was a wonderful little boy. He was fun. He was smart. He just knew he had something. It's taken me 45, 46 years to realize passion. I'm very honored to represent the School Board of Levy County as we present this plaque to our friend Christopher Coward. I'm going to read it. It says, presented to Christopher A. Coward with grateful appreciation for 17 years of service and dedication to the Levy County School District. We honor and thank you for your loyalty and extended commitment to our schools and communities. Best wishes to district office employees, Cameron Asbell, Paige S. Brickens, Ashley Clemenzi, Tamara Nimboyle, Devin Whitehurst. This is presented, the date on this is November 18th, because we're ahead of time. <laughs> I understand this. Everyone here loves you. You will be deeply missed. I hope that you come around and visit, and it is my honor to have served with you. That's a bigger honor to call you my friend. Thank you.
item seven, and that is Mr. Superintendent. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. So uh, I was you asked to table and bring this back. So we're looking for a representative who will represent the small school district council consortium. So as our liaison uh, with them. And um, I, I know I've had some conversations so with with Miss Lisa. So and I think she's willing. So but looking for a nomination um, from the board on, on someone to, to go ahead and name that liaison. Uh, I know. So you all are already getting uh, emails from Chris Doolin. So, but that's that's what we're needing to replace uh, Miss Perkins, who's been for a long, long time the the board liaison to the SSDCC. I would like to nominate Mrs. Clemenzi, only because her time on the board and her involvement, and she's always been at those breakfasts as well. That would be so, my nomination. Um, does the ch chair need to pass her gavel before making oh. that motion? Counselor? Um, that would be ideal. I pass the gavel to the vice chair, Mr. Asbell. Okay, we'll, we'll hear any nominations. I would like to nominate Mrs. Clemenzi due to her experience on the board and with new board members coming on, I know that they have a lot on their plate with all the trainings and the new school board academy one and two and all the finance. And I know Mrs. Clemenzi has always been a part of the consortium and has always been at the breakfasts. And that is why I would nominate Mrs. Clemenzi. Any further nomination? Right here. I'll, I'll be glad to, I'll be glad to, I'm there. All right, if there are no further nominations, I'll entertain a motion that nominations cease. Make a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further? Any? Do we have a second? I have a, have a second. Yeah. So is it just actually the only nominee? Or we doing Lisa? Or are we just, or? If you want to nominate somebody. Okay, I want you with it. Okay. Me. <laughs> I had the opportunity I, to sit down with Miss Lisa, so, and I think she has uh, time in her schedule, not and not discounting so and not to take anything so I did have some conversations and that was the reason why so we had Miss Brookins had made the nomination earlier so um, there was obviously no slight for for Miss Clemenzi at all because I know she's she's been there and is a part of that too um, but I and that's fine with me for at least I have it I've said before publicly that I have a senior this year so I'm, I'm super busy and but I would be glad to do it also and I, I am there at the breakfast so yes ma'am so do we have another nomination? I'm going to nominate my original nomination for Lisa um, because I, I've spoken with her and she is extremely interested. And I, I agree with Mr. Coward. It's not anything to take away from Ashley because she certainly um, does and understands and everything. Um, so I'm, I'm going to put my nomination for Lisa. Okay. Can I, All just, right. can I just remove my? If you would like. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll just remove my name. Okay. All right. So we have... Ms. Klusminski, Kleminski has removed herself from consideration. Kleminski. Kleminski. <laughs> Little girl. You know what I went through earlier. Right <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So Ms. Kle Mrs. Kleminski has removed herself from consideration. We have a nominee of Lisa Baxter or any other nominees. Nominations. If there are no objections, we will close nominations and move to voting. All those in favor of Ms. Baxter? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I will now turn this back over to the chairman. Thank you, Vice Chair. Congratulations. <laughs> those breakfasts are at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you got, help early. you got help cook them, too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to item 8. That will be Dr. Hanlon. Do okay. From Ms. Ms. Anderson. Ms. Anderson is um, next door at a uh, K2 cadre on the science of reading. So um, presented to you is the timeline for our textbook adoption. This year we are doing a textbook adoption for ELA um, K-12. Uh, the state pushed it up. Um, and then um, K-3 reading interventions and K-4 math interventions. 
uh, in addition to personal finance. So, um, so that is the timeline. Um, the timeline, uh, there was a deregulation, I believe, uh, I'm saying that correctly, um, in terms of the, the timeline on when the state should have an approved bid list to us on who's um, after the review process to the state. Right now we're in the tweaking period, so we're sticking with our same timeline as we had before, and we anticipate we'll have the, um, by the time we get finished, we'll, we'll rank them like we've done in the past, um, just in case we have a final decision and it doesn't make it on the, um, the bid list at the end. But on the 19th, we're having a, um, a session in um, the testing room over by, in the new warehouse for um, more um, representatives from the schools to come together and review the textbook materials as well as, uh, which we invite parents to, as well as um, at the um, district advisory council meeting in January to review those materials. So, so I, yeah. yes, so I just need a uh, motion to um, approve the timeline as presented. Thank so you. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussions or questions for Dr. Hanley? All those in favor say aye to accept aye. the timeline. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes. For the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, if there's any public comments, please come to the podium. If anybody would like to. Mrs. Coward. Any emails? We'll move on to the approval of the minutes for the meeting October 29th. I thought five was after eight. It's okay, go ahead and do the minutes, so, and then I'll go. Okay, so moved. All right. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes for the minutes. Mr. Superintendent. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. So at this time, um, there's a couple things, so that just uh, with timing and, and staff being out, so, uh, it was scheduled uh, public learning or uh, professional learning. So we'd like to bring a few things uh, before the board to consider. Uh, the first thing is the staff had the opportunity to see uh, a, a new initiative called Who We Play For. And it's a group that started over on the East Coast. And this group, they do uh, screenings, heart screenings. So, and it's been implemented in the NEFEC districts at Swanee and Flagler. It's no cost to the district. Um, would like to, for you to be able to do direct staff to bring uh, to model after Swanee. It would involve needing to bring a policy to the board and also then what they do is they do a uh, EKG or ECG screenings of, of athletes, extracurricular athletes. So um, this group started because of a young man who was 17 years old, dropped dead in the middle of uh, a soccer practice over on the East Coast. So. Um, in Brevard County and they, they've since started this program and it's called who we play for so and I think mr. Uh, mr. Bennett so has the ability to pull it up so if no okay no worries so anyways so I've talked to a couple of you about this program and um, what would like to st you to direct staff is that for incoming sixth graders and ninth graders anybody that does extracurricular activities that they would be screened and it catches this. It's not normally caught during a, a physical, and it would just be a way to be further safeguarding our students and, and also making sure to kind of put us out of some harm's way possible, any litigation, so with there. If we ever did, if the board ever did have to incur any cost, so um, it would be $20 a student, but at this time, between the generosity of the foundation and the legislature, they have uh, basically put away some money for our small and rural counties. So Swanee Flagler has done this, and it's uh, getting ready to go into Dixie County and some other counties. So we'd like to bring that to you guys. So in a motion of directing staff to bring them back, to bring it as a presentation to you guys. Mm -hmm. So you need a motion? Yes, please. Uh, yes, I'm, counsel. I'm sorry. Okay. I saw. Sure. And, and I was just going to say, um, I've had some familiarity seeing this program up close. Um, and it's been uh, not necessarily the, the origination of this program, but other incidents like that have definitely happened in other districts. Mm -hmm. but there's been some high profile ones around the state. Um, had the opportunity to work closely with Flagler on the implementation of theirs. Um, 
questions the board might have going into the staff presentation is the details of how this gets implemented. Mm -hmm. um, is it like another, do you, do you do it when you're doing the FHSA physicals? physicals right. um, is it another box that has to be checked before someone's eligible? Uh, if the board does want to go in that direction, or is it voluntary to participate, you know, opt-in versus mm -hmm. opt-out kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of questions? Um, and if it's a requirement, uh, if the board were to go in that direction, what are the other opportunities for, for people to get screened if they can't make right. the, the school-sponsored right. session? Yeah. So those are just all things that board members might want to be thinking about and will probably be helpful for the presentation to address. So with that, we ask when they present it to staff, so number one, it can be on our campus. They bring, bring the uh, machines in and run it on our campus, so with that. Also, the ability, we asked about having the ability for our host of students to gain clinical hours and have the opportunity to be alongside with, with those trained individuals that are running, so it's another opportunity for our students. So, so I think this is a win-win for, for our district and just wanted to bring this to you guys so as another layer of a safeguarding and us doing what's right for kids. So what we what was that going to be motion to to bring to have staff bring back and you'll have a presentation okay, so back, okay. from them. So I make a motion that we move forward with staff. For who we play for. Who we play for. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? I think it's amazing. After COVID and the vaccine, the incidence of myocarditis are just abnormally high. So mm -hmm. I think that this is an amazing protection that we could give our kids. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes to bring back the presentation. Okay, next thing that I'd like, um, and I'm asking for uh, approval is, uh, Along the lines, our district has, uh, through the years, has had two assistant superintendents. Um, we've had an assistant superintendent of administration and assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction. Um, somewhere uh, along 2018, when, when Ms. Dean uh, retired, so that position uh, seems has gone away, so it's not in position control, So, and I do not remember that coming for the board. So with that, I'm coming to you asking for three, three things. I'm asking for you to direct, so Ms. Wade, to bring back the job description for Assistant Superintendent Curriculum Instruction. Also asking for you to bring job description for Director of Safety and Director of Career Pathways. So um, that's my, my recommendation to you, to the board. I make the motion to approve those recommendations. Director of Curriculum. So we already have a Director of Curriculum Instruction. It's Dr. Hanlon. So we did have, when Ms. Tobin was here, we had Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction. So we'll bring in that one. That's what my recommendation is bringing back Assistant Curriculum, Assistant Superintendent Curriculum of Instruction. I was more asking the one after safety. Director right? of Career Pathways. Career path. We already have a coordinator, so, and I'll speak to the reasoning for, for that. Um, that position, at this time, we have a coordinator who is managing a budget uh, a little over a million dollars, so between Perkins and Cape, and also responsible for supervising four people. So I believe it's uh, well-earned and well-deserved. So we're bringing, the motion is to bring back that they be put on as job descriptions or are you assigning a particular district staff to that position but, right now? Uh, the recommendation was for Ms. Wade to bring back the job description to the board. So just the, the, just the job descriptions? Correct. Okay, so they would be there on the position control all those job des descriptions correct you have to establish, have to establish the positions. okay to be looked at at a future date correct and or be assigned a person to that position <clears throat> is there counsel is there any reason for the no having something like this done at the no, ma'am. There's. I don't think there's any concern about that. You know, some 
districts um, insist that positions need to go through the rulemaking process. And so obviously that's a multi-meeting uh, process where the board would have a chance to, to really dig into the job description and think about that. And then um, at the end of that process, when the positions are approved by the board, then they are recommended to be filled by the superintendent. Okay. So being that we have two new school board members coming aboard next week, they will still get, because th I think what they learn and what they know and their vote matters greatly. Um, so they will be able to look over the job descriptions. That's correct. As That's well. Correct. I wouldn't want them left out. Okay. I'm going to say second because there's a motion on the floor. We can still keep talking. But there was a motion, so I just seconded it. You seconded it? Yeah. Okay. So for, for that matter, so I've had conversations so um, with the new board members so about that so and have meetings set up so later this week so and obviously I do will not be the one so but my recommendation would be that Jamie Hanlon would fill the assistant superintendent curriculum of instruction so we would be promoting Mr. Gore to director of safety because of all the increased from House Bill 1457 and making Tanya Taylor the director of career pathways so those second two so it's really a promotion so and would have done this at the board meeting preceding but I was sick so and that's why it's coming to you today so this is nothing that was would not have been in in place so that uh, would be bringing to you so and did not want to do it before the election to appear that there was any improprieties so on my part or their part so these people have served Levy County extremely well and they're well deserving of so quite frankly they're doing the jobs right now so we're not putting a title we're not putting a name to the job descriptions like I just said but you're saying that you are giving a district employee to that position in this motion in this second no ma'am that, that's okay. I, I'm, okay. I'm giving I'm just, you you're so giving you have, names so I'm just asking yes, just to make sure and everything's yes, out they're, in the open it's all out in the open. That's why I, I did it this way. So the, the motion is to bring back a job description to the board. It allows the two new board members to be a part of this process, not circumventing anything here. That is the, the so but what, the last part of what I said there is my personal opinion. So Correct. in what has transpired over the course of time. So for the last four years. Correct. Okay. I'm just making sure that it's clear. That's all. So there's a motion and a second. So just to, be, just to beat this horse a little longer, I want to be sure I'm grasping what we're saying, and I think I am. We're making these positions available. Correct. Going forward. Correct. Once they are available, if the future superintendent has a recommendation, those can be filled. If the future superintendent says we don't need these, you can come back with a recommendation of let's remove those. I'm assuming. This board has always operated, so I'm not sure, as I stated. So the position was on there mm -hmm. in 2018 and was filled by Miss Dean. So, okay. and looking for some reason, I know it did not come back before this board to delete that position. So it's not showing on position control. So just because you have positions open does not mean you have to fill them. So, but that is my recommendation. So, and so. It's just a change in the job description, but right. salaries, no new positions, nothing has no, changed. Correct. No correct. position, but obviously there's those positions are probably correct. being handled right now, but just not with that title. Obviously, like I say, we can, like I said, that can be yes, decided sir. later on who fills them or whatever. But <coughs> when you certainly look, there's a position that needs to be created for these individuals. So. Correct. And we've always, I've always remembered two assistant superintendents forever. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor to add the job descriptions? Yeah. Did you? Oh, were you going to say something? No. Oh. Wait for you. To <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion passes. Okay. The last thing, though, I just want to, to make note you will see on, because I know you're getting ready to have the consent. So 
it added there to the consent. So at this point in time, that district administrators will go from being their contract ending July, or excuse me, June 30th, 2025 to June 30th, 2026. So by state's law, we can do up to three year contracts. So just feel it's uh, in keeping the district whole and making sure that we continue things moving forward in the positive way that they have continued, that, that staff will be there in place to continue safeguarding the district. So just wanted to point that out. So that's purely as the consent agenda. So, so you all knew that. I would like to move that item to discussion. Open it for discussion. Okay. Um, this I think is a little. So once again, Madam Chair. Um, yes, sir. I believe you should pass the gavel um, before you make make pull. motions. I can pull it from the agenda as the chair, correct? So, Without so, passing the gavel. Right. So any board member can pull a um, consent item for a separate discussion. My recommendation would then be to handle items 12.1 through 12.4 um, and then take up 12.5 as a separate discussion item after the rep, if there's no other items that need to be pulled from the consent agenda and then it can be discussed then. So it was 11. 11. Five, and the, but then, I, sorry, think, I think he's 11. meaning, I think okay. it's 11. Yeah, 11. Okay. Okay. 11.1 item 5. Okay, so, so moving. So that's 0.5. That's, that's, that's right. Point yeah, point yeah. Point, yeah, right. Point, sorry. So 11.5 is going to be separate action item after the board deals with yeah, point consent 11.1 through 11.4. <coughs> So with the consent agenda as it appears now from 11.1 to 11.4. I'll make a motion Mrs. to approve that. Oh. Mrs. Brookins, do you have any questions for no. that part of the consent agenda? I do not. Mr. Whitehurst? No. Mrs. Clemenzi? I do not. Mr. Asp? No, ma'am. Um, the same, may I have a motion for exception of the, for accepting the consent agenda, 11.1 okay, through 11.4. The motion. I'll wait till they're done. Okay, so just maybe mine just didn't pull up. Yeah. It's okay. I'll, I'll log out and log back in. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. You all set? Yeah. Okay, I have a motion and a second for that portion of the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? Motion passes. on to 11.5 or if you're ready Mrs. Brookins I'm, I'm ready uh -huh. so under the contracts and agreements no, I, I think we're dealing with the employee status changes and recommendations number right. five okay. under number yeah, five under that 11.1 out of five yes right. yes right and I think that's what was pulled from the consent agenda. Correct, so that's, it was pulled from okay. the consent agenda. So, um, Madam Chair, you can start with some discussion. You can wait and see if there's a motion regarding that in a second and then have the discussion. Yeah. Okay, so with that, is there any opening questions that the board has? I have a question. How many district, how many people? It's our coordinators and, and, and directors. How many do you know? Uh, just a second, I can come up with it. And this is the contract that starts June 2025? It just extends them. Their contract ends 20, June 30th, 2025. It extends them by one year. So by board policy, I have the ability to extend them to three years. So I'm asking the board So and by state statute. So it's the same thing. So. Um, 
my comments right now, um, I would say that. 14 individuals, I believe is 14. correct number. Yes, so. There is going to be a big change in this board. Um, the staff that's in place now, there has been no discussion of moving the staff. I think making a decision like this, going on the contracts without giving the opportunity for the two new board members, especially to review those contracts, even the board members here to review the contracts, to take one year and immediately move it to two years. It's a year and a half. A year we'll and a half that. before a week of this major change, I think this needs to be stepped back for a moment and we can most certainly look at it and review all those contracts and see if the board, the new board, would like to move those contracts from a year to two years. I mean, we also have to look at the fiscal impact. We have to get together with Mrs. Lake um, and I think we have to honor right now these two new board members and the change of leadership that's happening in a week. I think all that needs to be taken in cons consideration before moving forward from one year to two years. So, Madam Chair, I've had conversations so with the incoming board members, so and we'll have conversations with them later this week. So, um, but Councilor, correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm wrong, but this is a personnel issue, and so that under the duties set aside by the state statute that the superintendent has the, the ability to make this recommendation. I think the superintendent does have the ability to make this recommendation. Um, the, I, I wanna be aware of the fact that we're seven days out from this board change. Um, if any board members, just to, if they wanted to clear up any concern or appearance that um, this was getting done at the 11th hour, any board member could also bring uh, a recommendation forward if they if they believed in this and the superintendent wasn't doing that um, is just something to consider that as a matter overall of whether the the district's going to offer two year contracts or not. So the, the thing for the board to consider is the leader of the organization um, is going to be judged on the performance of the organization if. The incoming superintendent is not able to put their team together for almost half of their term. You got to think about what, how effective that's going to be, and, and that's something for the board to consider. Um, there's, I, I think, this motion or, or this item can be legally on here. The board can legally vote on it this morning, um, but there's also not a reason why it has to be done today versus next week or. I, you know, and in my perspective, um, I really see our administration has done an outstanding job. They're doing a very good job. Um, there's been indication that there's not going to be or has not been a staff change. I think this is a positive thing for our our leaders and um, our administration, and it's it, it's it's a it's a bonus to them, a really plus to them, and the and the great things that they're doing. I'm not negating anything that the district staff has done by saying that we need to hold off on this, but I am asking the board, I'm asking Mr. Asbell, Mrs. Clemenzi, Mr. Whitehurst, and Mrs. Brookins to allow me the opportunity to accept this leadership role and to look at the contracts with the two new board members. Get, I'm asking you, if both, all of you individually, to really think about this and give me that opportunity before we accept this as it is. Give the board members coming on the opportunity to learn and look at these contracts. And we can table it, we can bring it up, we can sit for hours and discuss it. But I think that this is a last minute extreme move and I think we need to step back and and definitely look at it in the future absolutely positively I have a question what if somebody in those two years wants out of the contract what if they don't want to be bound to a contract for two years I, mean, I, I think that would also depend on the, the terms of the contract
contract. Um, that, that's probably another item to discuss. Um, We've never stood, this board has never stood in the way of somebody. If they were to take another job, so they would have the ability to, to do that. So that is It's like good. a teacher. They so. leave in the middle of a school year so. and they have a contract yeah, and it's very well. disappointing, but we, we've never stood in their way. So I, I say this, so this is not anything so that we're groundbreaking out on a limb. So this has been done in districts so surrounding us. So this is not anything other. And like I said, I would have brought this at the previous board meeting, but I was out sick with bronchitis. So, so I apologize to the board for the timeliness. So there was nothing other than wanting to try and to shore up and some final things as I leave. So I am encouraging you for the sake of staff. So to go ahead and approve this. So it is the right thing as far as any financial issues uh, that the chair brought up. So this district is in the best financial shape that it's been in 12 plus years. So I would not believe that that would be anything that would be detrimental to this board, nor would I make any recommendation that would put the board in any issues. So has this ever been done before? Not in Levy County. I, so. do, I do agree with that. The state of the yeah. union, for lack of a better word, is wonderful. My Absolutely. only concern is the blanket contract of two years for four, the number of individuals. I'm thinking about my other world, my other job where we have evaluations mm -hmm. and the district office I don't think other than a climate evaluation and correct me if I'm wrong have evaluations because that to me would be my recommendation maybe in a certain time period say May the end of this year a probationary period if you don't have but we don't have that right we don't have evaluations do at the district office so that's my hesitation in in every other real world and that's a good every idea. member every member of this staff has been evaluated every year so 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 I'm gonna ask some questions that I may get accused of being a jerk asking these questions but I'm, it's my job to ask these questions yeah in seven days we have a completely new superintendent I have not talked to mrs. Boyle about what her plans are I don't have a clue I don't, and she doesn't have to tell me anything um, I don't think she sat there and has a plan. Not saying you don't have a plan, but you know, until you sit in a seat, it's kind of right. like being a school board member. Right. Nothing against y'all. Right. You don't know what it's like to be a school board member until you're stuck here, right. until you're here, until expulsion. until you're here at eight fifteen with an expulsion hearing that nobody's told you about those things, the shocker route. Um, and I feel like it's the same thing. So my question is, I, I have multiple questions. Currently, all if it's fourteen of these coordinators and directors. They are under contract until June 30th, 2025. Correct. Right, that's next year. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Or however long it is from now, six months from now, however long it is. So they're, they're there. This would extend it to the next year. Correct. 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 Okay, so what happens if, say, and, and I'm gonna reference you just because you're there, uh, nothing against you. Miss Lewis and the new superintendent, you do not feel as the new superintendent that Miss Lewis is performing up to expectations, but she's got a contract until June of 26. Do we just have to live with Miss Lewis there, whether the superintendent, suppose she all of a sudden becomes completely ineffective, you're not, but you know, all of a sudden she's just showing up. We have the same way that we coast. have when we have teachers that have, have a professional service contract that you have the ability to get rid of them, so. That's, that, this is my question. I'm, I'm wondering, does it hamstring the new superintendent? Because I'm, I'm a firm believer in this. I believe that you should be able to align and set your own, maybe you want to do away with the position. Maybe you say that Ms. Hanlon would be better as a whatever, as the head of construction maintenance. I don't know. But can, do you, does it eliminate the ability for the, the superintendent <laughs> to, to, to move folks around like that? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I deal with the contracts I deal with, not labor contracts and these things. So this is my question. Also, I, I believe in what Chris is promoting here, and I believe we're headed in the right direction. I don't foresee any reason to change any of these people. If any of this happened, I would be fussing. Right. I think it's a 
I think everybody's kind of leaning towards this. It's timing is kind of catching us off guard. We've never done this before, so it's kind of that. I'm not sitting here saying I'm opposed. I'm just saying what happens. And as far as I've seen us have teachers where they, they were on that contract, and I've seen teachers, we've had them here, where it was a case of, well, he's not really doing his thing, but he's under this contract, and it's a whole lot more trouble to get rid of him based on that contract, so we're going to move him over here at the same rate of pay he was here. Is that what would happen? Um, and I ask you because you're the legal dude. Sure. So, <laughs> legal dude, what, um, there's definitely a trend where multi-year contracts are being offered around the state. Um, and that's as people have become more just mobile in their jobs, um, that is something that, that some um, employees have specifically been asking for. They would like right. to have a little more stability and, and that reassurance. Um, so the, the board sets the positions and the overall terms and conditions of those uh, positions. Like, is there going to be a two-year contract? The superintendent picks the personnel to go in those positions. Um, so if they had a contract now and the superintendent wanted to make a change, the superintendent could go to employee X and say, I think you would be better in this other different position. And by mutual agreement, that move could be changed or, or, or done. But if the employee doesn't want to move to the new position that the new superintendent thinks that they would be more effective at, um, the employee's got a right to stay in that spot through the end of their contract term. Um, and to Ms. Clemenzi's point, lots of districts do address that issue. Maybe somebody's performance just starts dipping um, through evaluations and there can be kind of a, well, you get to stay in this position as long as you maintain an effective written evaluation. Um, and it sounds like that's not something that we have in place right now. One. If I'm not overstepping, one thing that the board could consider is um, tabling this motion for today. I'm not advocating that y'all do that. That's y'all's choice. But if you want to get the input from the new board members, but you also absolutely want to address this issue and consider whether multi-year contracts are right for the district, you can table it to a date certain and say the board's going to take up this issue um, and decide whether to do that or not. And I'll, so devil's advocate to what you said, Mr. Asbell. So um, if I brought someone and said today that I want to cut loose Jamie Hanlon, so, or would not make a recommendation, so last June, so the board would not have any say on, on that. They would approve unless the person I was recommending committed one of the seven deadly sins. Correct, Counselor? Yes. So that's the converse to kicking the can down the road. So I get it. I understand. So um, there's hesitation. We've never done this. So there's lots of things we haven't done in the last four years. But that's all the, also the reason why we've soared to new heights over the last four years. So, so I say that. Uh, I'm encouraging you to go ahead and handle this right now. So, and um, that's no slight on, on the new incoming board members. So do not mean it to be perceived any that way. So, and uh, that's, that's my recommendation to you all. That's why I'm bringing it to you all. So at this time, so. I think we also have to look at talking about a two year for district personnel. <coughs> we have one year contracts for teachers, correct? And I think we have to look at things being fair across the board as well. We have to think about the teachers with this decision before we go and vote on this. We, this is something that should be tabled and discussed. Evaluation should be discussed. Evaluation should be, as Mrs. Clemenzi said, and I've said this in the past as a board member, teachers have evaluations. <laughs> District staff should have written evaluations. The superintendent should have an evaluation. I've, I've said this for four years. We have to 
look at the perception of this as well from the teachers and the staff in our schools. And that's our job. That is part of our job. And again, I think we have, this will be a disservice to the new board members, not giving them their chance. I know you can say you've spoken to them, but still, I think it's good for them to collaborate with the board, read the contracts with the board, and have their decision made as a whole with the board. Counselor, do you have the ability to offer multi-year contracts for teachers? Um, I don't believe so. I, 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 I'm not certain about that. I haven't researched that issue. I, it's my understanding that that was being brought up in legislation for the people who are not, um, you know, on a professional services contract. Um, but I thought that there was some consideration of changing the legislation, but I don't think that made it through uh, all the way. So I, I think everybody's not on a PSC is on an annual contract. But if that's something I need to do some research on, but I believe that's the status. If this gets tabled, it's it's well worth discussing. But right now we have a motion and a second, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Who seconded? Do we have a second? Okay. We do We do not have a second. I thought we had a motion, I mean the second I'll for second discussion, yes. Call. I'll second it and we can continue the yes. discussion. You'll second it. I second two. it and we can keep talking about it if we're not ready to vote. Or to table it. Oh, no. We I don't have a motion to table it. We don't. Okay. Don't okay, know. got it. We have a motion and a second on the floor right now. I will pass the gavel to you and make a motion if I need to. Okay. i take it. Okay. So you're moving to table this? I will make a motion to table this, uh, and we can even put it. We have a motion and a second, second at this time floor. right now. You have a motion from Ms. Brookins, a second, second. from Ms. Clemency. However, however, in parliamentary law, a motion to table takes precedent over a main motion. So she is perfectly in her parliamentary rights to move that as part of discussion. So we have a motion to table this. Are you tabling indefinite or, or to a time certain? We can do a time certain if we want to look at the calendars. Right now we can do a time certain. Or we could say for after the break and the two new board members have an opportunity to attend some of their trainings we can put it to that point and get their feet underneath them for a little while and read material during the break. We'd have to look at the calendar. January 14. 14 is the, I think, the first meeting that the board will have. It's the 14th and 28th. January 14th. So that's, okay, so we have a motion to table this until January 14th. Do I hear a second? I second. We can keep talking about it. If that's any, you know. We can't talk yeah. about we motion to table, okay. but you have seconded. So okay. we proceed to vote. All those in favor of tabling this until January 14th? 14th. 2025. 2025, please say aye. Aye. Can I speak on anything or yeah. Yeah. No, we just have to vote. Then we go back to talking about it if it fails. Any other votes? Motion fails. We'll go back to discussing the original motion. Okay. Probably, no, yes. I'll turn it back. Okay, thank you, Vice Chair. My concern is, like I said, this has never, they say there's been a change of power multiple times in Lee County School Board Superintendent. If this has never happened, then that's my thing. I mean, I believe in all the directors that's here. I mean, I'm, I'm behind them, but they're with a, with a change of power. I mean, me being the president of a company, I wouldn't want somebody to come in before change to take away any power I had. I mean, that's that's where I'm at. I'm a little torn because I believe in everybody that's there. And I, I want them to continue to be here for 10, 15 years. But I do believe that you don't need to take power away from somebody that's come into power. And that's where, I, that's where I'm torn. 
you know, I believe in the people, but I also believe, you know, as a passing, you know, passing the power of that person, they should be hamstrung about being able to do their job. So, I don't know, that's just a bit of comment. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's bringing up good discussion about maybe procedure that we need to have moving forward. Um, I just, I don't like the blanket 14 different positions for two years being locked in. I just feel like there needs to be a check and balance. I don't, I, I don't, everything you said, and then in addition to that, I think that that's just not how the world works. I feel like there needs to be accountability and not just a, a, a locked in contract for two years. So maybe we can amend it and make it a shorter time frame or in add evaluations or probation period and discuss that. Which we could dis discuss when we bring this back with the two new board members. All that to be said, I agree with what Devin said, as far as the team we have, where we are, all of that is, is wonderful, but I just don't like the two years blanket for 14 individuals and not breaking them down separately. That's just, that's just not how, that doesn't seem fair to me. I'm completely up in the air. I see the benefits of extending the contract. I really see it. Tragically, if this had been six months ago, I wouldn't have a comment to make. But we're here on a transition, and that, to me, is what's making it, it difficult. Um, plus, I also, I don't know enough about the contract. And, I, again, my question, my question earlier, if, because we're fixing to have new personalities. If whomever that director is, and I don't anticipate any of this happening, but, it, but it, we're, we're talking in hypotheticals, whoever that person is and the superintendent if they don't mesh for whatever reason and the superintendent as we have seen superintendents do in the past needs to move somebody needs to make those changes to bring it to us with whatever the justification is does the contract negate that person's ability first step the other thing I don't like about these contracts is my side is obligated to you for two years your side can leave it any time you want, and that's fine. You know, it's contract stuff. So those are all things that run through my mind on this. I, and I think timing is what really most everybody's got an issue with. I don't think it's the two years. I don't think it's any personnel. I don't think, it, and I don't think it's a knock on past super, soon to be past superintendent, soon to be future superintendent. It's just a timing thing. And even those of us that have been here forever, we've never had this at this moment. And so that's kind of throwing us all out of whack. Um, I, I think it's something we do need to address I'm, I'm on possibly, I'm sitting here studying on maybe tabling again, but at a different date to allow us even more time because we, we don't know. Um, because I do, I do think, it, I think it's something that we don't necessarily need to kill, but I think it is something that we need to, you know, just gauge in the room. It seems like a lot of people aren't for it. But it is something that, at this time, but it is something that we need to uh, look into. So yeah, if it helps attract. I will. More I people will retain people. Well, I have another comment too. Um, I just I feel like uh, Mr. Cowart said he did not. He's not bringing this to us at the last minute. He was truly out um, our last meeting, and we know he was very sick. Um, Mr. Cowart, how? the administrators and things how many how many switches have we had in the last two years uh, in the last two years so we <clears throat> we created a position so actually we didn't create so we had some grant funded positions that came on so the coordinator of MTSS came on to the general fund but those positions were in place Miss Young was in that position prior to then taking over for Dr. Hall as director of ESC. So with that, the position for Mr. Hawkins that came into, so that was added this year, once again, not hitting the general fund. So there's dollars between homeless and foster, youth mental health first aid, and the threat management. So position and the state 
um, sending dollars to represent that threat management to have somebody solely over that. So those two positions right there uh, would be the only positions that have been created in, in the last two years. So, and, and my point is we really haven't had that much change. We've had the, our staff and our administration in place and, and doing it. And um, I, I appreciate you bringing this forward as you know new and good things for our county and, and those incentives to look at. So um, I, I don't really see it as looking at it as a negative or a changing of um, superintendents. I, I think it, I see it as a good for our personnel. I move to postpone this to a date certain of January 28th. And this requires a second and can be debated as a date and time. A second. Your chairman of the House about to be chairman in there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. I have a motion to table it and a second further discussion, full, complete further discussion. Well, we're we're postponing. This is a motion to postpone, postpone. to a certain date. Post January 28th. Yeah. January 28th. My reasoning for this is I believe this is an important issue. I think it is something we need to get to. I think in engaging the board, there is a definite, we don't really know what to do. Um, I think January 28th gives everybody ample time to do the research they want to do, to get adjusted into, new people get adjusted into office, get a feel, um, be able to get your questions answered, and we can make a decision one way or the other on this. Um, so I, I, I think the 28th would be a good day to shore this up. Thank you. I have a motion and a second for the 28th. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Councilor, I will not be in here on the 28th, so I do not need to vote on this. Is that correct? Um, but you don't have a voting conflict, so you do need to vote because okay. you're present. Thank you. I'm voting no. Okay. Motion passes four to one to table it until January 28th for full discussion with the two new board members. <coughs> We'll move and, on. Yeah. I'm sorry. And you did say that a board member can bring this. Yes. I mean, we tabled it, so we're right. good. But if further down the road, right. if it fails. It's it definitely coming back the 28th. 28th, yes. right. 28th. Right. Right. Yes. That's when it comes back. Right. It's, but, it's, but it can always be brought up. Uh, I mean, yes. if it fails then, it can be brought up. It can be brought up again. Yes. Again. Again and again. Yeah. This brings us to item 12, the finance items. I make a motion to approve the uh, finance agenda. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion for the finance? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes for the finance. We're moving Mr. Superintendent to the end, so we'll go right to board comments. No, we didn't. No, we good. did that. We're good. Okay. Um, Mrs. Brookins, would you like to start? Thank you. Um, this is my last board meeting and um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone um, because I've had the privilege to serve on the school board and I really have enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, I really enjoy this job. Um, I'll always be blue and gold and um, support our schools and I hope that um, next year I can um, volunteer and serve in that role to um, in kindergarten especially, <laughs> um, but I'll always be a supporter of our schools. I know that there's been a lot of changes over the years that I've served and a lot of good changes, great things in our district, good times. We've had new schools that have been built. We've gone through the extended process to um, get those things completed and that's been a challenge and um, we've had to go to Tallahassee so many times to lobby for those and, and just, just work for that. And, with that, Chiefland High School, I'm so, so proud of that school and how it looks and all the great things. It's, it, it's really, it's, it's a very nice school. Um, but um, I just appreciate the, the good times that we've had to work together to get these things done. Because we, we always haven't always agreed and we never will. And um, 
but we always work through them and we've, we've had the chance to, to talk those things out and I do appreciate that. I've also had the honor to work with uh, uh, many superintendents, um, Will Irby, Mr. Johnson, Cliff Norris, Bob Hastings, Jeff Edison, and, and Chris Cowart. And I, and I, <laughs> a bunch of them. A bunch of them. I've been there a bunch, yeah. <laughs> so, old uh, with all them people. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all right. We well, you know who's going to be the old board member after this one. Um, but um, I do, um, I admire every one of them and, um, and, and all the, the good times. And, we, you know, we've had challenges with each one, too. So going forward, there will be, and we'll all get through it. And um, I, I just I appreciate every one of them. Um, our district staff, I just want to say thank you. You're a wealth of knowledge and, um, and everything that you've done, and really appreciate that. Um, I appreciate our principals. I, you know, work closely with our chief one high school and elementary, and um, they've all done great, and um, it, all the support staff with, with everything. They're fabulous people, so um, I do appreciate that. And I know I have true, complete confidence in our new board members that they're going to do a great job, and I know that our seasoned board members are going to support them and share their knowledge. <laughs> Um, with them, and um, I just I truly wish them the very, very best. Thank with you, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Brookins. Madam Chair, I'd like to take this time. Congratulations to Ms. Brookins on your retirement with grateful appreciation for 35 years of dedication to the Levy County School District. We honor and thank you for your loyalty and extended commitment to our schools and our community. Best wishes, Superintendent Christopher A. Coward, Cameron Asbell, Tammy Boyle, Ashley Clemenzi, Devin Whitehurst. So, Teacher of the Year and SRE, Miss Mulligan at Wilson Elementary, and Miss Black at Joyce Bullock. Um, so I know Cameron was a little hurt losing on his own home turf. <laughs> well, uh, it's rigged. You were, you were trying to stay in smooth <laughs> somehow. I ain't figured out how it's rigged, but it had to be rigged. So anyway, so congratulations to them and like the event. And, uh, I raised a bunch of money and uh, had a good attendance, and it was, it was good. And uh, I want to congratulate um, the Wilston FFA Farm Business Management for state winning team. So they'll be already got that knocked out. So they'll be going to nationals. And uh, other than that, I guess we got another rivalry game. Oh, we only got one licking this year, but I guess we'll, we'll see how the second one turns out. <laughs> Make sure Coach Gore have them ready up, and maybe Coach Pruitt can have a something. Maybe we'll have a little surprise. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whitehurst. Mrs. Clemenzi. Um, I just wanted to say, well, I missed the gala. I hated missing it. Back to having a senior, he took precedent this weekend um, and had to travel out of town for him. But um, I just want to say, Paige, it's been an honor to be next to you. You were the only female on the board when I started. So 
Um, but it's been it's been fun. It's been fun watching your restaurant from your computer at all of the meetings. <laughs> Tampa, <laughs> Tampa, Tampa, Tampa. Tampa. Not here, not here in Tampa. Um, oh, okay, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all around town. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a joy to get to know you and work with you, and I think Thank of you. you as a friend. And same with Chris. It's been an honor to work with you. Started out as a, a board member, and then um, you've done a fantastic job as superintendent, and I'm proud to call you my friend. And uh, as well, and um, my nephew was on the state business uh, champion team, yeah, so I'm super proud of him. Right yeah, and Zaire Ford and Tate, right? Yeah, the two three. Yeah. Um, and to wrap it up, Turkey Bingo's in Yankee Town on Thursday, so um, <laughs> it's a big Bingo. event for them, a big fundraiser. So um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Clement, and Mr. Aswell. Thank you, ma'am. Um, talking on FFA, Carson Minx has qualified for state and ag education demonstration um, and I can't remember the technical name some ag management thing uh, had a few things going on so I'm, my notes are gone um, they finished third in state recently um, farm, biz. farm business management thank you yes sir um, well, the <laughs> no it's a different thing <laughs> this ain't that one middle school and yeah this is, this is, this is oh. wrong folks <laughs> sit down and rest right. yourself while her. <laughs> All right, just chill, okay? <laughs> Smarty. <laughs> Your wife ain't here from Bronson to take care of you right now. Right. Keep me straight. Um, I've said this before, I'll say this again. I hate change. I'm one of those guys that change happens in life, but I hate it. Um, and we're fixing to face a big change. Um, years ago, or it's been a long time now, but it seems like just yesterday, I, I got put on this board to, after a controversy. And uh, someone was on this board that's still here today, and she was a guiding force. I saw her as a person who, if you could be like her, you're a pretty good school board member. She, she loved the entire county, but she was sure enough loyal to that <coughs> baby blue and that weird yellow. And uh, I'm kind of loyal to that super gorgeous orange and blue. You know, sunrise orange and sky blue. Because the good Lord is an eagle, too. Um, <laughs> But I have, I have developed a, a friendship in it with, with Paige Brookings, and I'm going to viciously miss you. Thank you. Um, expulsion hearings are, nobody gets to see them, but they're awesome when Paige Brookings is here because she'll look at a young and go, sit up! <laughs> and, and everybody has to get tight because that teacher comes out in her right there. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And uh, um, I remember one time Jeff Edison made the comment about who, was the, uh, who he felt was the best school board member he'd ever had to deal with. Um, the best school board member. Unless she's not my favorite school board member, I won't say who that is because people get insulted. You know. But she has been by far one of the best school board members that I have seen and I have enjoyed all our times together. I've enjoyed fussing with you. That's I've enjoyed right. agreeing with you. I've enjoyed our conversations. And I think it is absolutely wonderful and fitting. And uh, I want these guys to think about it, you know, we build schools about every 70 years. And 70 years from now, some kid will enter that brand new high school right here today. There'll be a plaque that shows the name of a lady who cared so much for that community and for that big old school. And I am proud to call her my friend, and I'm proud to know that her name will be there. And you worked hard for that thing, and it's great that your name is on there. I'm gonna miss you. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of me. When she she reined me in, when, that's why they don't let us sit by each other. She used to hit me. So I'd get carried away. But, but that's all I have. We just wanted to control that mouth sometimes. Sometimes. You know, I don't have a lot to say, but when I do, it's gold. <laughs> I'm done. You always have to. For now. For now. now. You know. Thank you, Mr. Aspel. Um, I'll just share quickly that the pie auction is happening at Cedar Key on November 26th. So the one of the churches down there, the Episcopal Church, is sponsoring and helping it, but it will be able to be held at the school still. So I know that they're, they're very happy about that. And track and field has done excellent in Cedar Key. They, there's some fast runners down there and that heat to watch them come back in from practice. I, I don't even know how they're still running in the heat 
but they're, they're doing very well. Basketball is getting underway. Um, I don't have m as many stories that everyone has with Mrs. Brookins and Mr. Coward, but one story that I won't forget is Mrs. Brookins and I sat down back in 2020, and we didn't break any sunshine laws, Council, but I won't forget the one thing that Mrs. Brookins her piece of advice was always ask questions. And I will remember that piece of advice. It was good advice. And I'm sure she probably already shared it with the two new school board members. And Mr. Coward, I appreciate everything you've done and service to Levy County. And I won't ever forget, if you're having a bad day, let's go sit in a kindergarten class. And that's all I have. Oh, counsel. If I can. Yes. I promise nobody's going to cry over this. <laughs> but um, I just thought before we got into the organizational meeting next week, if we could have just a brief discussion, if the board's comfortable with the current meeting schedule, uh, I'm trying to do some planning on my end. Um, so second and fourth Tuesday, second being the evening, fourth being the morning. Does that work? Okay. Just like it's been, yeah, 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 just yeah. keep doing what we're doing yeah. in terms of the schedule. Yeah. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Superintendent, did you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, first and foremost, so I'd just like to thank um, so Mrs. Boyle. So, thank you for serving the, the students in Cedar Key uh, as a school board member. So, and um, just uh, wish you the best of luck as you, you step into the new role. So um, I hope you'll always put our students first and, and think as you step into a new role, there's a new thought process that has to be uh, looked at things that you're no longer looking at the one tree in the forest, but now you're looking at a forest. So, and sometimes there will be times where you have to step out and it will be controversial things. So, so I wish you the confidence to be strong in your decision making and, and do what's right for Levy County in a whole. Yes, sir. Thank Mr. Asbell, um, we have we, we go go way back a, a long time ago, and I know you like to tell stories on me showing up in, in a sailor suit so that my mom dressed me up to church. Um, <laughs> was a cute little boy. But you and, look uh, good. So. <laughs> And, and your comment that there's two people that they were born into this world into a suit. So one's Jojo <laughs> Knopf and I'm the second. So I, I wear that as, as a badge of honor. So um, growing up in Bronson and being here from the time that I was two and a half uh, outside of some time whenever I was chasing a dream to be a college basketball coach. So I, I have always considered Bronson home. Bronson has been where my roots have created. So I'm proud that I have one son that graduated as an Eagle. I have a daughter who, who's a shark and Cedar Key was home. And, and I'm very thankful to have the roots that I put down in Cedar Key. Um, Ms. Clemenzi, so uh, I appreciate your friendship and appreciate your, your service to the board. And uh, as we've gotten to know each other, so you and Devin, um, through going to church together and uh, just uh, being a part of and watching your boys and your family grow up so um, and seeing what they've meant to the Red Devil community and um, just appreciate your your passion that you bring for there and for Yankee Town for the Sand Nats. Yankee Town is a special place for me. Um, as a board member, I, I aligned with, with Yankee Town because um, they're kind of out out there and they're outliers and um, as you so I just appreciate what, what you did for supporting that school and, and will do for the next two years as, as you serve on your term so Mr. Whitehurst uh, same echo the same thing so your friendship so um, obviously seeing you many occasions for foundations seeing how whenever you hired we hired Annie on the foundation. We got Devin a, as the right hand, so, and to do a lot of the heavy lifting and, and, and lots of things. Uh, our district is better off that we have people that come together as a package, and, and you have served uh, this district well, and I, I wish 
uh, you know the best, the best of luck serving the Red Devils and, and your passion that you bring there um, that goes many, many generations deep in your family and serving, continuing to serve on this board like family members have before you. So I appreciate you. Miss Brookins, I came on to this board a little over 12 years ago. Uh, I vividly remember it was January of 2012 and Miss Beth Davis came to me and sought me out and said I'd like to run for one more term. I know that you're getting active in the found you've been active in the foundation. I'd like you to consider running uh, in 2016. Well two weeks later Miss Davis so called me and said I've decided I'm done with everything I've got going on or starting a quilt shop what Mr. Mike and, and the clams and oysters and whatnot, so I'm going to be retiring. So two weeks later, I hit the ground running, and I showed up to my first board meeting and stopped and talked to you. You gave me encouragement. Um, you've been a, a great board member and, and a great employee of Levy County, our school district, for the 30-plus years, and you truly, you do, you love the Indians, but you've looked at things as a whole, so and your business background, along with having your educational expertise, has been invaluable for this board. And I, I thank you. And I thank you for your friendship also. Counselor, I, I appreciate your, your wise wisdom that you've shared and uh, trying to keep me on the state straight and narrow and, and keep us uh, between the ditches. And, and so I, I thank you for, for what you've brought to this, this district. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna sum in a whole the district staff that have been here, some that precede me two superintendents, some that precede me one superintendent, and those that uh, had the pleasure of, of hiring and bringing to the district office. You have served the citizens of Levy County, the students and the staff with the highest honor. And no matter whether we disagreed whether we were in lockstep, I hope you know that I am extremely humbled and thankful to have been right beside you serving. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, to my wife, I couldn't do this. Not many know. We met a little over 12 years ago, so um, by campaigning in a roundabout way, and uh, because of campaigning and being involved with the school district, I earned a wife <laughs> and, and two sons to, to complete my family. Mm -hmm. And so this district, I owe great debt of gratitude for that, making that happen. So. Um, With that, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to have served the citizens of Levy County. And I know that our kids are gonna soar to even higher heights. And uh, I'm looking forward and excited for the two new board members, for what they will bring uh, to the table and, and their experiences and them becoming a part of a group. Um, Mr. Delaney has the I'll say esteemed pleasure of serving another district. And just because I say this to go on the record, just because you can do something and you have three votes doesn't always mean it's the right thing to do. So I encourage you all to find ways to find common ground to make sure there's as many 5-0 votes as possible because that's for the betterment of our students. And I don't say that saying that you're, you're rubber stamping anything. I say that when there's dysfunction or there's someone that's creating dissension from this dais, it limits the effectiveness for our students and our staff. So my parting words to, to everyone is to find ways to find common ground and there to be many, many 
5-0 votes for the betterment of our students and our staff. Um, I thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, I know that the district is in good hands. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Appreciate you. No further business. Meeting adjourned.